Ash, you know that uh, that TikTok, like where it'll be like, of course we're sisters. Blah 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 blah. blah. Let's try to do that. Yeah, as podcasters. Okay. Ready? Yes. (laughs) Why did I just get so shy? Okay, we're podcasters. Of course, we hate the sound of our own voice. (laughs) Is that not accurate? I do. You know what, actually, okay, wait, <laughs> not us like breaking down everyone. I have always hated the sound of my own voice, my talking voice. But when we started the podcast, I had so many people like commenting or, or damning me and being like, oh my God, you have such a good podcast voice. So it's made me more confident in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> what? The, so we're not doing you know that. Go do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. I don't, I'm not good at this stuff. Ash, come on. Taryn. Okay. We're podcasters. Of course we only get ready from the waist up. Damn, that's good. That's a good one. Come on, Ash. We're podcasters. Of course we do ASMR sometimes. Do we? Sometimes. (laughs) Sometimes. We're podcasters. Of course we need a break from each other after every episode. Damn it. There is nothing me and Ash value more than being confident in your own skin. We're all about Truly. that self-love, self-acceptance, which is why we get so pumped to partner with companies that believe in the same thing, like our sponsor for today's episode, One Skin. Their goal in their products is to make it easy to keep your skin healthy while also looking and feeling your best. No complicated routines, no multiple set protocols, just simple, scientifically validated solutions. The secret is One Skin's proprietary OSO1 peptide. It's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. And they've got several studies to back it up. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code advice at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with code advice. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Today's episode is brought to you by Earnin. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. If you guys do not know, Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. Download Earnin today. It's spelled E A R N I N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in unsolicited advice under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help our show. Unsolicited advice under podcast. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Subject to your available earnings, daily max, pay period max, and location. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust Member FDIC. Are you guys a fan of the show? If you are, we have a VIP subscription that you can sign up to to get much more of your girls here. Become a premium subscriber and get access to exclusive episodes, ad-free listening, discounts on merch, and so much more. Plus, it's only $5 a month, which is way cheaper than your everyday latte. To sign up, just go ahead and go to the show notes and you can click the link. Also, if you have any stories that you would like us to read on our podcast, this is your moment to shine. Send your emails at, what's the email called, Taryn? Advice unsolicitedpod at gmail.com. It can be funny. It can be sad. It can be deep. It can be light. It it can be your story. It could be a friend's. It could be short. It could be long. All shapes and sizes are welcome. So send it in today. You know what's funny? Uh, is three hours from now, Ashley's going to still be thinking of what she could have said. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh, I hate it's this. It's okay. Stuff. How about this? Let's like marinate on it and let's actually do one. Would love that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got if you this. guys don't follow us on socials, you should because we've been popping off. We've been lately. popping up, popping off, lately. popping, popping up. Got an instant and a TikTok, so follow us. <laughs> so follow us, follow us, follow us. Anyways, wow. Oh, hello. 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 hello.
Welcome back to Unsolicited Advice. I'm Ashley. I'm Taryn. And we're here to advise you. Amazing. As we always are. You know what's something else sometimes? For almost, what, five years now? Yeah. What's our anniversary again? Isn't it? In- it's in It's in my calendar. Is it May? It is in April. April, I believe, which it, it is Oh my April. gosh, it is April. Oh, dang, it's April Fool's. I should have played a prank on you. I'm pregnant. I li- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the Virgin Mary <laughs> has conceived again. Hold the phone. You didn't even laugh at my joke. I'm so sorry. I'm looking for... Did it pass? Because that is so us if our No, it definitely didn't. Passed. It definitely didn't. I put it in my calendar and I don't... Ash, see it. We need to do something big. It's our five year. I know. I know. That's a big one. I know. Cakes. Cakes. Things. Things. Live show. Celebrations. Everyone's like, <gasps> really? oh my gosh, we're five. Well, our parents forgot our birthday. <laughs> we are the us parents. Us being the parents. Dang wow. it. Um, well, this is so not special anymore. I really had big plans for our birthday, and I'm so sad that that. It's okay, it's okay because we were on vacation, and we'll we'll do something. We have to do something. Yeah, let's do. We'll. we'll sorry. Well, when you're <laughs> listening, because we have a double today, and this is our second episode. So when you're listening to this app, actual chaos. We'll have already like posted it was our birthday. So do us a favor and go like it and comment go on like it, it and give us some love because we're, we're feeling leave, bad right now. We're gonna leave this in because we want you guys to experience that roller coaster with us. That I was cannot believe quite we the missed roller coaster. Our five. I can't believe we missed years. our five year. That was such a big milestone. Five hey, years. congrats! That was the worst. That was high a five. really bad high five. five. Uh, also, that was my chair. I didn't just fart. So okay, well, I just felt the need to clarify. To clarify Jeez. That. Um, wow. Now I'm just sad. Five years of bliss. Crazy. Actually, okay. Let's, w- even though next week will technically be like three weeks after our five year, I still think we should like plan ahead and mm-hmm. like have an episode where we dedicate to like, so we're, we're going to put a pin in this. Yes. And next week we'll record an episode where we're ready our to very celebrate. late five year celebration. Very late. Never too late. Never too late. Nice song. Uh, Beautiful. <laughs> She's going to work on her our theme song I'm sorry. For that. I'm really thrown off that I'm I missed that. I'm very phased, too. Um, let's, you know, how are you, Taryn? <laughs> I mean, I was great. Now I'm a little sad. I'm a little sad, too. No, no, we shouldn't be sad. We should be happy. Five years. Five years. Crazy. Uh, how many podcasts last five years? I feel like Not a rare. lot. I feel like it's very rare. No, yeah. We've watched a lot come and go. Come and go. <laughs> come and go. But we're still here standing we're strong. We're still here. Trying to, you know, trying to make it. Try, <laughs> trying to make it. Um, um, which, you know, in, in in order for us to make it, we would love if you guys left us five stars. Yeah. A good review. Five stars for five years. Sent this. Oh, my God. Beautiful. You, now you have to do it. Beautiful. How do you say no to that? Five stars for Send five Send this episode years. to someone you know. Um, be sure to follow us on all our socials. But, okay, wait, wait. How crazy. Now, well, like I'm like we're either gonna get we're, into this can't. or not. We Let's can't. not because I I'm gonna get I'm like, gonna get emo thrown off because I wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't prepared. Okay. Let's not. Um, we've all we we all know Ash needs some preparation time. Well, There's she nothing does. wrong with that. She does. And There's I, nothing I wrong pre- with that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, actually, oh, I didn't even talk about my brother's wedding last episode. I said I was gonna talk about it, but then I didn't. Um, so my brother got married, and it was like beautiful, but. It was like pure chaos leading up to it. Um, They got married in Temecula, this beautiful golf course, but the place had no reception. Zero. So we sent a bunch of people to like go help. And Ash, God bless her, was there helping. But the person that like was supposed to be there and like knew everything ended up being like an hour late. Okay. So Ash is like calling me and asking me these questions. And I'm like, why is she asking me this? Then I figure out no one's there. And Ash was, I, I know I texted you like a billion times how much I appreciate you, but I think, I think it's very important to take time to like emote on your friends. Well, thank you. I just want to say, I can't imagine how stressful that was (laughs) and how overwhelming that was. And the fact that like you literally like before you were even done with your sentence of being like, 
nobody's here. No one knows what to do. Blah, 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 blah. You were like, you know what? I've got it. It's going to be fine. Like, we got this. And then you just like, I knew you were stressed, but I also just had so much faith that you would do it. And Mm. the fact that you put so much work into that for like my brother and my family, I think is just so beautiful. And I hope, you know, like as a friend, I was so proud to call you my friend. Thank you. Like so proud. And I hope you know how much like everyone appreciated that. Oh, I I know. It's one of those. It's one of those things that's just. What do you do? You know, <laughs> you put and, your big girl pants and on. <laughs> POV, like I am just, I am just perpetually so early <laughs> to everything, everything. <laughs> I literally went Can't to really. an, an event recently, right on time. Actually, I was ten minutes early, and I get there, and I no one's there. It's do you know just how many the events team. I've been to with you where they've said, "Oh, we're actually not set up, but you guys can go hang out That's in the lobby." That's literally what happened. Yeah. And they were like, "Oh, we just said this time to make sure like people got here early. We don't start for an hour." And I was like, "Everyone's an on hour? LA time. Ashley's on her time." Hour? <laughs> got a matcha, got some content, sat down, like posted. I was like, "What what am I going to do?" So, long story short, um I wasn't involved in the planning of this wedding in any way. I just said I would help. I show up, literally no one's there. <laughs> the guy's rolling out the tables and I'm like, he's just now rolling out the tables? And I was like, okay, it's okay. She's going to be here soon. She said she was running late, but she's on her way. She hasn't come for a long time. She texts me photos of how the tables are supposed to look. I don't know where these boxes are. I don't know where any of this stuff is. All I have is a photo of the centerpiece and how it's supposed to look. And I'm like, <laughs> sure so I'm like I'm going through the boxes and I'm like pulling stuff out and then I start placing everything and then like the table numbers come out and I'm like I don't even know like what order these tables are set up couldn't find apparently there was a paper it was like buried and I just didn't see it but she had to like send me a photo of the tables but it came out or I had to ask Taryn for a photo of the tables but it came out blurry and I couldn't really see and then I had done pretty much the centerpieces and then your aunt and cousin or aunt and cousin showed up and they helped so much. Yeah. And they were really like snapping oh, off at the at us, the people at the team because I can't do stuff like that. The women and in my great. family are the most, I think it is, do you, like you probably understand why I'm the way I am. Like I'm such a like, okay, what? There's a problem? Why are you stressed? Like let's figure it out. Let's yeah. do it. Like that's on both sides. Like I have very strong women in my family, mm-hmm. like very like, like ballsy assertive. opinionated assertive women which like I I am to an extent but I am a little more like reserved with certain things but when it comes to that like just go get like okay where is it like You're reserved roll your sleeves up to f- personal things with I'm, personal things yeah I'm reserved Everything in like how else I say external things. is for you're sure, very for much sure, like them sure. and I was like having a hard time because the team there like didn't really have their shit together and I was just like hi <laughs> the tablecloths don't match <laughs> What are you going to do about that? You know, and um, the tent is leaking. Like it. Were you planning on? Can you fix that? You know, and I was like trying to get them to drop the sides of the tent because it was freezing. and It was blowing over all the centerpieces. And they were like, it doesn't do that. And I was like, what do you do when it rains? And they were like, it's only rained here once. And I was like, that's a lie. There's no way. This is not real. There's no way. Oh, I can only, I wish I could have watched my aunt and cousin they handle that. They literally stepped in and <laughs> we had asked the guy for like something specific and he was like, oh, I'd have to go get the golf cart and go get it. Your cousin jumped in the golf, or golf cart and went oh, got yeah. it herself and oh, I was yeah. like, I love her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So funny. They are bosses. Yeah. yeah. It was. But... It was an absolute riot and me and the girls had like. 40 minutes to get ready. We ended up getting ready in her, Taryn's dad's uh, RV. He brought his RV to yeah. the wedding. If any of you remember how I told you he was obsessed. Yeah. Well, honestly, that RV came in clutch for so Multiple many reasons. Things. Yes. Um, yeah, but they honestly, like you guys looked beautiful. And the, the most important thing, because even I was like running up and down this hill, my hair, by the time the wedding came, my hair and makeup, I don't even want to see like what the pictures look like because it was like rainy. I was like sweating. Um, I was worried about like her hair and everything. It was so, really windy. Yeah, it was so windy. So um, 
It was pure chaos. But the most important part is that she had no idea of yeah. anything. Like that's the thing that matters. Like she was so blissfully unaware. <laughs> there was of one all point of the chaos where I was like texting Taryn because we really needed to find something, and Taryn wasn't responding. So um, I hop in the golf cart and I go up to where you guys were getting ready, and I like knock on the door, and I I come in and and they're like hi, and I'm like hi, where's Taryn? <laughs> Oh, like, is that when I'm I like, calm, down? Yeah, I'm like calming myself. <laughs> and I'm like, relax. And I was like, hey, Jules, you look beautiful. Yeah. I was like, do you know where Taryn is? And they were like, oh, they, she just went down to the tent. I was like, <laughs> the way, like have so much fun. Bye. I went down. I'm like, hey, where's Ash? And then all of a sudden I just hear like, skirt. And you like pulled up in this golf cart. Yeah, it was it was all hands on deck. But that's that's what I'm I'm so grateful for the the support system I have in my life and like the people in my family. Cause everyone is just the like, okay, we'll step in. Like, what do you need? And it was just so beautiful and everything turned out so beautifully. And, but it was pure chaos up until, so I slept for like three days. Yeah. (laughs) Also, I feel like this is a weird flex, but I feel like I, I think I'm the 90th. If I was to say I'm like the 90th percentile in anything, I would say it would be like, like, not mindless work, but it would be like kind of like simple tasks. Yeah. Like I'm really good at like putting my head down and just like getting it done and not thinking about it. Yeah. And I've always felt like it's it's very similar to like like gym workouts or cleaning or yeah. um drives or you know, stuff like that where it's like it has to get done. I'm really good at like shutting down, I'll daydream about whatever and I'll just like get it done. Yeah. And I think that's something I'm actually like really good at no that's a skill and that's dude. a great that was a great area for me to use that yeah skill. if you were to say you were the 90th percentile in anything what would you say it is I would say probably like my people skills yeah you are good with people yeah like I can I can have a conversation entertain communicate with like any type of person even people that are like the worst I can like still make a way to like have a conversation Mm -hmm. and like make it a successful interaction I would Mm -hmm. say probably people skills oh yeah that's great yeah I love that just curious there is nothing me and Ash value more than being confident in your own skin we're all about that self-love self-acceptance which is why we get so pumped to partner with companies that believe in the same thing, like our sponsor for today's episode, One Skin. Their goal in their products is to make it easy to keep your skin healthy while also looking and feeling your best. No complicated routines, no multiple set protocols, just simple, scientifically validated solutions. The secret is One Skin's proprietary OSO1 peptide. It's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. And they've got several studies to back it up. I've been using their products for a while now and I am hooked, you guys. But don't just take my word for it. OneSkin has over 4,000 five-star reviews and were recognized by Fast Company as one of the most innovative brands in 2024. You guys already know I am a skincare girly. I take my night routines very seriously and I'm obsessed with OneSkin. Treating the symptoms rather than the root cause of aging has been a long-term norm in most skincare brands and it's absolutely ridiculous. And that's what makes OneSkin so amazing is because they're actually going beneath the surface to treat the underlining problem instead of just like covering it up with a band-aid. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code advice at oneskin.co. That's 15% off at oneskin.co with code advice. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Okay, so there's these two guys on TikTok. One of them I totally have a crush on. He's way too young for me, but age is just a number, baby. Mm -hmm. Um, And they did this series where they're saying like random things girls do Mm. that the guys find attractive. Ooh. I'm telling you, you should go. It's like three parts. Okay. You should go watch them all because I don't know if I'm just like full of myself, but every single one I was like, 
I do that. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I totally do that. They're clearly talking about me. <laughs> so, um, but I want me and Ash to do one for the guys. Yes. And we can share we can share our answers later because I want it to be like genuine when we record it. So I don't want to know yours yet. But I feel like it'd be funny to like go through these with you and see if you feel like you hit yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I love how they're like, we're retiring. Yeah. Started out, I have, you know, like when you go to when you go to like a beach or a pool, and she's like laying there tanning, and she's just got like a little book. <laughs> <laughs> there's something. Wait, hear me out. There's something. No, I'm loving it. There's something so wholesome about like. Like, yeah, like, you better yourself. You tan. <laughs> Dude, I died at that one because I don't, like, couldn't be me. Like, I have a really hard time reading by a pool because my eyes are very sensitive when you it comes need a to light. Hat and you need sunglasses. Yeah. There's a whole thing that goes For about sure. doing like, that. Like, I'm, I'm much more of a, like, I have headphones on. I, like, get lost in music and then, like, whatever. When I tell you, Ash, part of her personality is a book tanning like I love when I it. lived with her like I it's not like she just does it for like the content or like to appear no 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 when I would come down the stairs and she would just be like lounging by the pool with a book like no one's watching no one's asking her to do it it is life-giving yeah it's it her personality giving and I did it not last weekend because it was dumping rain but like I did it not that long ago and yeah. everyone was like isn't it kind of chilly and I was like yeah a little yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like warm enough if, you know like if the breeze came it was too much but like without the breeze I was like this is kind of yeah, nice yeah. This like is nice. my skin needs a little color so I, d I do it all the time yeah and I so always have a book you're it's one to zero that's me yeah right now you get that one I think you might like this one he's so this cute this one is simply when she just has stomach problems <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait 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 this one actually sent me and this is why I think that this man might be my soulmate <laughs> because he says the most like offhand ones that I'm like literally just got some new fiber gummies <laughs> Because the stomach problems have been taking over my life. Yeah, same. That's <laughs> literally am doing gluten free and dairy free to figure out which one I'm allergic to. But, <laughs> newly, newly diagnosed stomach issues and um, on the elimination diet <laughs> for food allergies. Trying to figure it out. So it two to tough. one. Two to one if you're keeping score. I wrote good laugher, but I don't mean like just like a cute little laugh. Like that's obviously nice too, but I mean like. You know, like the type of person when they're around, you just feel like way funnier. And like they laugh at <laughs> not just everything you say, but like all the right times. 100%. So you're good laughing. I think that's so cute. That is so cute. The good sense of a good sense of humor. Yeah. Well, and like someone who I think it's the key is like someone who thinks you're funny. Like, yes. Like I, I know I'm funny. I'm hilarious. And I've talked about this on the podcast before, but I had, um, one of the issues with my ex is he wouldn't laugh at me. And like, I would notice it the most when we would be like with a bunch of his friends and, and I'd be, be like telling a story and all of them are cracking up and I would look at him and he would just be like stoic. And I'd be like, you don't think I'm funny. He's like, Oh no, that was really funny. And I was like, that's so weird to me. Yeah, but he he likes to keep you down. That's true. He but, preferred you down. I mean, if we're going to get deep. Um, but I just think that's so cute. Like, that's something I'm really looking for, too. Like, I want someone who just, like, thinks I'm hilarious and who yeah. I'm, like, obsessed with them, too. Yeah. Because even, like, you and, Jack you and Jackson, like, you'll laugh at things and I'm like, I don't get it. But it's, like, so cute. Because you got a thing, yeah. Yeah, because, like, you guys have, like, a thing. Yeah. You guys, like, have a rhythm. You can, like, read each other a little bit better. yeah. yeah. To me, this is like one of the cutest things of all time. Make when she, okay. <laughs> anyways, when she has like a distinct feature or like something about her that's like so distinct to her, like a little mole or like a little freckle oh. or like something that you like look at it and you're like that separates her from <laughs> a okay, mole and freckle. Take picture. your pick. <laughs> 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 I was literally like, I know Ash, me and Ash are like, which we one? We hate them. We hate them. I literally them have like a freaking everywhere. constellation on. Do you see? Yeah. I have so, I have, so, I think this is because it's my driving side. 
totally. But I have like liter, and then I just got like fifty thousand like skin tags removed <laughs> because yeah. it's like it's freckly crazy. girls. Yeah. Like it's it's a struggle. It's a struggle. It's just like when you go to a restaurant and you have a waitress and <laughs> server waitress. I don't know what the correct what you're supposed to say, but you get your check. And there's like a little note on it <laughs> with like a heart. It's like, I know you're not flirting with me, but now I love you. <laughs> Did you ever do that? Like, um, I mean, I never worked at a restaurant, so that doesn't fully qualify for me. But I would do that to some of our like favorite yeah, yeah, guests. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would. I would do that, especially if it was like either like a table I really loved or if there were cute guys, I would put like. Like thanks or like have a great day or like something with like a little heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, like to put it simply, when she's like kind of a little nerd, like a little bit of a nerdy girl, Mm -hmm. like instead of us sitting there on our phones all day, like if she likes to do like adult Legos, you know, Nick and I were doing adult (laughs) Legos, like puzzles, crosswords. Oh yeah, yeah, crosswords for sure. That is the most thing I've ever heard. Adult Legos. Adult Legos. Like guys, I think I found my soulmate. Hit him up, but turn. not really. Like, oh my god, if he sees this, how embarrassing! <laughs> but like, isn't that cute? I, I, I love those things because I feel like guys, like you don't really know what's going on in their head, and I think it's so interesting. Like when you ask a guy, um, who like it would be interesting. You should ask Jackson. I'll ask Jackson next yeah. time I see you. But um, like if you watch just like the little tiny things that made them be like oh my gosh, I like her. And I feel like with guys, it's like that. Like first they're like, oh, she's hot. And they're like intrigued. But I think when they start to fall, it's those little things where they start to see the girl as like adorable. And it's like little characteristics or like little things she does. Yeah. And I just like hearing, you have to listen to all of them because hearing all of them, I was like, stop, this is cute. And it gives me like hope that like, you just have to wait for your right guy that finds all your quirks. Everything adorable. Yeah, like super adorable. Cute. So we're doing good. I stopped counting score, but I forget too. But it was v- it was very. I think I went very much like, like we got this on the nose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love that. Love that. <laughs> Love that segment. Let's go ahead and get into my favorite segment of the episode. It is a tearing it up, and you guys already know this is when you guys send in funny stories, and we get to laugh at them all together. Yes. Um, this one is titled "Why the heck is that on your nightstand?" Oh God, that could mean so a short many story. Things. <laughs> <laughs> a haiku. <laughs> Hello, ladies. My name is Lexi, and this is a funny, embarrassing story about my sister Jada. And I'm submitting the story from both of us with permission. <laughs> I was going to say, this could get tricky. During the summer, we lived together before Jada got married to have some sister time together. Well, one night I came home kind of late and went to tell her good night and that I was home safe. This is a usual thing that we just do to catch up on each other's days and chat for a sec. When I walk into her room, all of the lights are on, but she's dead asleep. So I decided to nicely wake her up and tell her, hey, Jada, I'm home safe. Good night, etc. She wakes up kind of groggy and we chat for a second. She asks what time it is and I look at her nightstand to check the clock. Well, I didn't even get to check the clock because I saw something that totally caught my eye and grabbed all of my attention and I couldn't not look at. All I notice is a used tampon sitting on her nightstand. I point at it and said, Ew. (laughs) I point at it and said, um, why is that on your nightstand? Still waking up, she looks at her nightstand, then does a double take. Her eyes immediately become huge and a weird look comes across her face. She then says, I have no idea why that's there. I actually thought she was pranking me. A disgusting and very weird prank it would be, but a prank at least, I was hoping. Sadly, it wasn't a prank, and she realized she must have taken it out in her sleep thinking she was, go- like, in the bathroom. <laughs> Is that a free... Wow. New fear unlocked. Honestly. New fear unlocked. Honestly. <laughs> nope. She- Jada didn't go to the bathroom. She literally just took it out, <laughs> set it down, and went back to sleep. I would rather sleepwalk and fall downstairs <laughs> than that be my reality. Never in my life have I experienced something like this and never will I ever probably again. So now I look at her all the time and say, hey, remember that time you pranked me? Ew. I hope you guys had a good laugh out of this story as we still do. And then she added a photo 
of her and her I was sister. like, what? <laughs> oh my God, imagine. <laughs> Aw, cute. One, you guys are adorable and I so see that you guys are related. You have the same smile. Yeah. You have the same face. Wow, very similar looking. Does anyone ever tell you and Alicia that? No. Y'all do not look alike. I know. <laughs> I am FedEx. Did you ever see uh, Cheaper by the Dozen? FedEx. FedEx was the like young redhead that like didn't look like anyone else in the family, oh, and yeah, they called yeah. him FedEx because he didn't fit in. That is literally me. It's it's just weird. Yeah, but that's kind of like that's kind of like Ryan. No, me and Ryan are exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, because me and Brett, all of are, you guys look exactly the same. We have like darker features, um, and Ryan is like tall. He's very just like European looking, whereas like I think. Because we're German, but we have Italian. I think me and Brett have more of like the Italian because we have yeah. like the darker eyes, darker hair. You guys stuff are like darker that. everything. And he just yeah. came out like yeah. light hair, light skin, light eyes. It's exactly what happened yeah. with me. Except my mom is a redhead. And she, so colors, okay. she colors her hair. So you can't really tell. But like I can show you photos of her. She's like an actual ginger. And I obviously got it from her side. And then yeah. we did one time there's a really if you want to ever hear a really weird story I could tell you about like how I ended up eventually meeting my birth grandmother by accident but um we have seen photos of like her side of the family I have like I look like them like they all have blonde hair freckles everywhere there was a like bright blue eyes and there was this one cousin who took one of his like school photos looked exactly like mine and we each had like a gap in between our teeth and I was like stop oh my god my people my people <laughs> that's they're all over here like every my sister fits in with all of my dad's side of the family yeah so um all of them have brown eyes i came crazy. out with blue it's just it's just it's so genes genetics are crazy that's even like my my nephew is um it's funny because every time I, i've said this before but every time i post him like i just posted a t- i think it was a tiktok or on instagram or something with him and everyone's like, I've gotten so many comments or DMs that are like, oh, my God, it's your twin, which makes sense because everyone says me and Brett look a lot alike. You do. Um, and I think Axel favors Brett. He totally. looks like her where Lana looks like Vanessa. Yeah. But he has the most gorgeous, like curly hair, which Brett has curly hair, but he has these beautiful blue eyes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how is that? He's like, literally going to be a heartbreaker. No, he's so Those handsome. Those two together, like dark hair, blue eyes, that. It just inevitably you're gorgeous. Yeah. You don't even have to try. You're, no, it's just so the mixture beautiful. of both is just like oh, so and good. And he's like funny and sweet. He's got long dark lashes. Oh, it literally looks like I he's wearing him. mascara. It pisses me off how beautiful he is. Yeah, he is so pisses beautiful. me off. Um, I always tell him it's not fair because they popped out to just beautiful perfect children and by the time I have kids they're gonna be like wonky (laughs) like walking in circles in the corner it's fine I have been having on a real note I've been having um I have never in my life been worried about having kids until very recently yeah a lot of people I know are getting their eggs frozen and are doing like a lot of things in preparation and some of them are younger than me I know and it a lot of my friends are starting to have kids. It's scary. And I'm having this moment where I was just like, I'm Should I be older than you? Yeah. Um, am I, you know, okay? And um, yeah, that, that's just a little update. Yeah, no. I've I- never been scared before or like worried about it. I just never have. And then it hit me recently and I was just like, <gasps> Yeah, I'm not looking forward to, I have like a gynecologist appointment coming up and- the I just last had mine. one. I feel like that always happens with us. Yeah. The last one I had, she started talking to me about egg freezing and I literally started having a panic attack and told her like, hey, I'm not ready to have this conversation and I'm starting to she freak out. She brought it up to you? She brought it up to me because we were just That's talking weird. about like, so I, I always talk my doctor's ears off. Like I'm very like conversational. And so I don't, we were talking about stuff and then she brought that up because I'm, I mean, I'm older. I'm like past mid thirties now. No, I'm in my mid thirties. Um, I think you're 36, right? Yeah, so that's, that's mid thirties. Um, so, I mean, it makes sense that she's talking to me about it, but I was just like, and then she was saying, "Oh yeah, like I have patients as young as like their early twenties start the process," and I was like, "Okay, I'm starting to freak out now, so I need us to just like, 
I was like, at my appointment next year, we can talk more about it, which now is coming up. And I'm like, I'm not ready to talk about but it. But then you're late 30s. Huh? But then you'll be late 30s. No, like, I have one coming up, like, oh, in the I next thought you weeks. meant in a year. No, I was no, like, no, 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 Taryn. No, no. I'm, I'll talk to her more about it. I'll still probably have a panic attack, but I'll at least get, like, the tests done, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. I, you I know, hate it all. I might go with you. <laughs> I hate it all. Today's episode is brought to you by Earnin. Life doesn't happen bi weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. That feeling like when you're waiting for payday and you're like, I have so much hope for what I want to do with this money, and you yeah. have to wait. Imagine if you could just like snap and you get have your plans yes. with for that money, and you're just waiting for it to you're hit. Just waiting you're to just hit waiting that. for it to you're hit. You're just freaking refreshing, uh-huh. refreshing. If you guys do not know, Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to a hundred dollars per day, or up to seven hundred and fifty dollars per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to a hundred dollars a day as you work, and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. Life can be so unpredictable and that's what's so amazing about earning is that sometimes, you know, you just need that money now and you need it for a very specific reason. Like, I don't know, an unexpected trip to the vet, which happens to Taryn and I all the time. I'm not joking. Two weeks ago, yeah. $900. <laughs> and you're just like, wait, my bank account wasn't ready for that. Or maybe it's like a special night out or a last minute gift for a loved one. It could literally be anything. And sometimes you just need that money. So make earning a part of your financial routine and join earnings over three Three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about earning, I think about financial stability and security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today. It's spelled E-A-R-N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in unsolicited advice under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help our show. Unsolicited advice under podcast. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Subject to your available earnings, daily max, pay period max, and location. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust Member FDIC. This story is titled Severe Daughter Guilt Help. Okay. We're both daughters, so we got you. Here we go. Hello, I would prefer to stay anonymous, but you can know my name. It's Michaela, please bleep. I love the pod, and although I would never typically write into a podcast, lol, I just want to write to get this off my chest. I feel as though this topic is not talked about enough, and I would love a new perspective. I'm 23, married my high school sweetheart about a year ago, and currently love my life, except for this one thing. My parents got divorced when I was 10, and I moved out of both of their houses the year after I graduated high school when I was 19. My parents' divorce definitely changed the dynamic and the relationship that I had with my parents growing up, and I am feeling the after effects now as an adult. For reference, I was closer with my dad growing up because I thought I was more like him, a little more outgoing, talkative, friendly in social situations, less strict, etc., As a kid, I often feel like I didn't understand my mom, who to me at the time appeared to be more withdrawn, quiet, didn't always want to be in social situations, etc. In high school, my mom and I butted heads quite often because I felt like she was controlling strict and I felt like I couldn't share things with her like boys or friendship gossip. I often told her I wanted to move out as soon as possible and was so ready for my independence and that I would rather live with my dad more than her. Harsh, I know. Now that I've been on my own for five-ish years, I look back on this with extreme guilt. The distance living on my own away from my mom gave me a lot of time to reflect, and I learned so much about who she is and why. She struggles with severe anxiety, and I believe she suffered verbal abuse from my dad during and after the divorce that I was never aware of. She worked so hard after the divorce, long and hard jobs, to take care of me and my siblings and sacrifice quite literally everything to provide. Of course, being young and immature, I was blind to what my mom was going through and didn't even realize how she might be struggling personally, while at the same time just trying her very best to be the best mom as possible. My mom is the sweetest, sacrificial, and strongest woman I've ever met, a true angel. 
I obviously got married quite young and my siblings have also moved out and left the house, leaving my mom living alone. I spend quite literally every day thinking about my mom, what she has done for me and how I would do anything to go back in time and be so much more sensitive to what she was going through. Try so much harder to understand her and treat her with so much more love while I still while I was still living with her. I know a lot of people struggle with this guilt and I have done so much to be so intentional about texting and calling her and telling her how much I love her, how much she means to me and how I am so thankful for the life she provided for me. But I feel as if those words will never make up for the past hurt I might have caused her. I'm not sure exactly what advice I'm looking for, but I guess generally how to deal with growing up, leaving your parents and learning how to rebuild these relationships in new ways. I'm sure many people might not be exactly happy with the relationship they had with their parents in high school, and I'm not sure how to move on from that. I would love for this to be read on the podcast because I think many others might feel this too, and I'm so appreciative of any advice or thoughts you might have. Best wishes and love, Anonymous. Damn. I know. Oh, it's so normal, though. Yeah, this is this is a really hard... It's a really hard topic, and I know that everybody has different opinions on how to handle a divorce and things like that. I've I've watched this happen firsthand a few times, and I think it is so admirable when a parent tries to not make the child aware mm-hmm. of the ugliness that's going on. But I do think, like, you kind of rob your kids of being able to, like, make a decision on their own. And and this is what always ends up happening is it's usually the stable parent that is the one that's really trying to hold everything together that is made to look like the bad guy. Mm-hmm. And then the other parent who's causing all the chaos is, like, the one you're like, oh, well, he's fun. He's this. So, like, I hate you. I'd rather be with you. And I just think, like, at the end of the day, I don't think that's helpful for the kids. Like, I don't think you need to, like, be like, oh, well, like, your dad did this or your dad treats me like this, like, all that stuff. But if, like, they can't do swim lessons because the dad's refusing to pay, I don't think it's fair that the mom has to be the one who's like, hey, sorry, but we can't afford your swim, and then is the bad guy while they go to their dad and complain about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay to say, like, Sweetie, unfortunately, like this scenario is now me and your dad have to pay half. And and unfortunately, right now he's not able to do that. And I can't afford it on my own. Like, I think there's ways to do it in a way that is respectful and not being like, oh, your cheap dad won't pay. Like, you know what I mean? But I've heard so many of these situations where you watch the parent who's actually trying to just do the best they can for the kid, become the bad person Mm -hmm. and receive all the hate from their kids, which by the way, anonymous, they do for a reason and they gladly take because they want to be your outlet. So I know that you have a lot of guilt, but I think your mom knew like why you were feeling harsh and those things towards her. And she chose to make that sacrifice. So like I wouldn't, be too hard on yourself. Yeah. Um, but it's so, I think this is a hard topic and I think it's respectable, but I also am like, I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily like the best thing for that unstable parent to just be seen as the hero while the, the sacrificial parent is like, you know what I mean? Yes. I under, I fully understand the urge to protect your kids from thinking ill of their parents or just, or just being too aware of the situation. However, I do think, I agree with Taryn, I think kids are way more perceptive than we give them credit for. And I think just because you feel like you're hiding it, I don't think you're actually hiding it. 90% of the time, you might be hiding Mm -hmm. like the worst of it. But I think think children, even very young children, are very perceptive and are able to pick up on vibes. They're able to pick up on like glances, on like dirty looks that parents could give each other even though you're not saying anything rude to the to each other in person they can pick up on stuff like that and i think once you're once they're at an age where where they can pick up on stuff like that i think they can handle truths in a very easily digestible way 
<laughs> so yeah, if if dad is being super unhelpful and 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 really affecting a lot and causing all the chaos in in the relationship, like Taryn was saying, I think it's okay to let them know that this is dad doing this without dragging his his name yeah. through the dirt, you know. And I think that requires a lot of effort on the on the stable parent, which is so admirable if they're able to do that. But I think. For example, I had family friends who went through this and she like wouldn't cry in front of her kids. She like wouldn't show that she was beaten, like being like torn down by the yeah divorce. And I just remember being like, but like need we to need to see. learn that. We need to learn yeah. what that looks like to, Emo- to like, process and be hurt. And, and you know what I mean? Like also, I've- also realize that you're the one being hurt. Yeah, you know, like I, I think it's a, it's a great way of showing your kid that it's okay to be sad, that it's okay to like mourn the loss of the relationship that once was, and it's also okay to let them know, hey, dad's being really mean to me right now, yeah, and it's not okay, and I think it's very important that they know it's not okay, you know, yeah. and I think it's okay to sh- to show that to them without being disrespectful to your ex spouse, you yeah. know, and I think it might. You know, it might cause them to be emotional along with you, but I think it'll give them a better idea of the picture and it will help them understand your side. Yeah. And it is important, I think, that they understand both sides, you know, and I would want to know like who, for lack of a better word, I would want to know who's the villain and and who's being the victim, you know, like I would want to know. Yeah, I think I think, too, like it's very, you know, like. I think sometimes it can be generational and you know, like our parents were very much like their parents are very much like bury your emotions and like mental health wasn't like a thing and work through the tears. I think like it's hard when you realize when you start to recognize your parents trauma and like what they went through and, um, and it's, it is hard when you get older and you're like, wow, I did not make that easier on her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or him. Um, what I will say, I I don't think it is ever too late to heal something or to address something. Mm-hmm. I have this theory that I, us as people, so like uh, me, Taryn, what's what's to the surface of me right now is is who I am currently right now. Yeah. All it takes is for me to retell a story. Like if I start to talk about a traumatic thing I went through as a kid, I genuinely feel like all of the different versions of us are still inside of us. And when we actually let ourselves express something or how hard something was, or we let ourselves like cry about something hard that happened to us, I feel like that version of us that went through that is like able to like let things go and Mm -hmm. if you've ever had a breakthrough in therapy you know exactly what I'm talking about where you finally get to like the first time you started to feel a certain way with your therapist and and all of a sudden you start crying like nonstop, and you're like for me the first time it happened I was looking at my therapist like I I am broken what is happening like I can't stop crying and she was like you're letting out something that's been trapped inside of you for a long time like so I believe like we hold all of those versions of ourselves like sometimes I'll talk about even when I talk about me before I knew I had thyroid cancer if I talk about her too much I start crying because I feel so much empathy for that version of myself who was like so scared and lost and didn't know what was going on Mm -hmm. and I think that's a way that we can like heal and start to love ourselves is when we like see ourselves as that, not just like I'm tearing as a whole, but I'm, I'm so many different versions of like who I am now, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I think you carving out, I think right now what your approach is, is you're trying to make up for it with like all your little, your texts and, and reminding her how much you love her and things like that. I think if you had a day with her where you sat, And you can plan like a beautiful day, but you sit with her and you share the way that you're feeling and you ask her and and say, mom, I know that you were trying to protect me from a lot, but me as an adult right now, like I want to be there for you. Like I want you to tell me like what you were going through. Like Mm -hmm. I want to sit and process this with you and I want 
a chance to be there for you as your daughter because I I was too young and like naive to be there for you then. Mm -hmm. And I think that you guys can have a beautiful, deep conversation about that. And I think that's going to heal a lot for her and you because you guys are going to access those versions of yourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I don't think there's I don't think there's anything that can stop a relationship from healing past and, and moving forward. But I do think for something as deep as this. I think that's going to take a very intentional conversation or you writing out a very like detailed, you know, explanation of what you're feeling right now so that you guys are able to have that conversation. And then I think like the sky's the limit of where you go from there, but you can't live your whole life feeling guilty. Like you have to forgive yourself and move forward. And that's the only way I feel like you guys address it and then you move forward. Yeah. How old is she again? 23 yeah um something about that age like things start to shift a little bit with you and your parents specifically your mom I think moms go through stereotypically I think moms put in a lot of work where dads don't tend to hit emotionally and like do I feel like generally mothers do a lot of the like brunt of the work with raising the child that's not always the case obviously there are amazing dads out there but stereotypically yeah and like they get the most sass because they're they get they feel the safest like and my mom couldn't stand each other for a very long well me mostly (laughs) and we did not get along it was was just a face it's it's one of those things it happens all the time but I loved my dad but guess what my dad wasn't parenting me yeah the way my mom was my mom was doing all the hard work my dad you know wouldn't support her but wasn't doing the brunt of it yeah and so because of that i'm a daddy's girl you know and i why was that so popular like i remember being like oh yeah i'm a daddy's girl like that was like such a popular thing like for you to i don't know if it was just like my high school but ever all the girls were always like oh yeah me and my dad and like the moms were always like the villain and i remember feeling like a pressure to be like oh yeah me too even though like i was closer with my mom which is why i was i didn't i can you imagine like yelling at my dad (laughs) No. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> like, I love my dad, but he just has that person. Like, you don't yell at him, you know? But I would yell at my mom because I felt safe, too. So it was like, it's so sad that, yeah, the parent that you're closest with and you feel the safest to be, like, your true, like, expressive self is the one that gets, like, that bad rep. <laughs> yeah. No, th- that's that's how it is. I know I don't remember it being, like, a fad or anything, but I, I think in general – that's just how it goes. And I saw this. I mean, I've been in this space for a, for a while now where I I think of my mom sometimes and I just cry. Yeah. Like I think of my mom sometimes and I just am so grateful and I just can't believe the shit that I put her through. Yeah. And I saw a TikTok recently where it was like me and my mom, my mom at 25 with me. And it shows like this beautiful 25 year old woman holding her child And then it swipes to like me and my mom now. And it showed like a long text thread of her mom checking in and her not really responding. Mm. And she was like, this is your sign to like go reach out to your mom. I literally sobbed. Oh, yeah. That's emotional. And I I have to say, like, I, I know that we go through phases where we hate our parents and then we want independence and then we want space from them and all that stuff. But I guarantee you, if you have the conversation that Taryn is telling you to have right now at 23, you will not regret it. Mm-hmm. I, like... Even on days where I'm having the worst day and I, if I haven't been able to like check in with my mom, if I see a text that I didn't respond to, it breaks my heart yeah. now because I'm just like, you know, they're getting older and I'm getting older and I'm just like, you want to uh, take advantage of every possible oh gosh, moment yeah. when you can. And I just so implore you to initiate that conversation with your mom because she's tra- probably right now trying to respect your boundaries because you've made it clear you don't want her around. So I would give her the green light and say, hey, I'm in a better place now. And I would love to like restart our relationship and like get on a better, better footing and a more solid foundation for our relationship. She is going to light up and you are never going to regret doing that. Yeah. Um, So do it. Uh, I just, yeah, it's also like, I mean, I know this is like heavy, but. 
I've seen so many friends like lose a parent too and to have to deal with you know that regret of what their relationship was like before or what they wish they could have said or they wish they could have done and I think that's just life in general I think life is so precious and you never know like when is going to be your last day with someone and I think we all need to be more intentional and not self-focused with thinking about the people around you and like what if that was the last time you were able to interact with them like what would their thoughts be like leaving that you know yeah and I think we all need to just take that extra second to just be kind to make sure our words impact the world in a good way and then to also like not wait to handle something yeah imagine think of how like messed up the world is think of how messed up you are think of how chaotic and and sometimes unreliable and and sometimes crazy your life is and you are and imagine trying to like parent a child at the same time yeah that parenting is hard they're gonna mess up and at a certain age that hits you that one day you're going to have to do the same thing. And all of a sudden, like you just view your parents differently. And I think you're hitting that age where you're just like, Oh, they're human too. And they're just out here trying to, and they didn't know what they were doing either. And we're the same, Yeah, you know? And once you hit that phase, all of a sudden your mom's adorable and you just I look know. at her and you're just like look at her she's so cute you know? know and it just like it everything changes so I'm actually I'm very excited that you're entering this new chapter and that um you and your mom get to start a new yeah. a new relationship together it's gonna be so fun yeah yeah no this is gonna be good you but you gotta forgive yourself too and move forward like you were a kid you know we yeah. all were buttheads when yeah. we were kids <laughs> like, yeah you can't be too hard on yourself you were young if that's a messy situation yeah yeah but we can, we can, we can, we, write, can, we move can fix it forward. Yeah. Thank you so much for writing this. And I'm sure that's definitely hit multiple people listening. So we appreciate your authenticity. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get into my story. This one is titled how to introduce the guy I'm dating to my family. Oh, we both did family ones. Yep. Um, Hey girls, I hope you're doing amazing and I love the pod so much. I just recently started listening at the beginning of the year and I fell in love. I am an Enneagram 6. Anyways, I would like to stay anonymous. I am 22 and going to be 23 and I'm currently dating someone who just turned 29. Now, 29? 29. Now, I know that that is a pretty large age gap and it concerns me a little bit because many people have different opinions when it comes to age gaps. Since I'm in my early 20s and he is in his late 20s, many people say slash think we are in completely different stages in life so it won't work. I disagree and do not feel like there is any disconnect or any type of power dynamic. I have already finished my degree and I'm starting my big girl job lol in a few months. I'm soon going to be on my own supporting myself without the help of my parents and he is honestly the best thing that has happened to me and has already helped me grow as a person within the time of us being friends and dating for more context we met when I was 21 and we were friends prior to us dating we met through a mutual friend he really supports me and is not holding me back in any way of my life he has met a couple of my other friends and they absolutely love him and they see how much he cares and appreciates me And they have told me that they see how happy he makes me. When we are together, it doesn't feel weird and we get along so well. I've dated other people in the past and have had a long-term boyfriend. But the guy I'm dating now has treated me the best out of everyone. And I do not think I can find someone else who is patient and truly cares about me. Off topic. But he also suggested I listen to your podcast because I was looking for something new. LOL. Well, we love him already. We're big He's a gem. (laughs) Um, she continues, now I understand how someone might not like this dynamic due to the age gap. So it makes me nervous to have him meet my family. Get off your phone, Taryn. Uh, sorry, sorry. Is, wait, wait, wait. But she's 22, 23, and he's 29? She's, she's 22. He's 29. That's not that crazy. I don't think it's that crazy either. I don't either. think it's crazy. Um, I'm listening. On your phone, the entire story. I was not on my phone. Yeah, That's you were. very dramatic. Roll the tape. I was not on Roll my the phone tape. I have the entire time. vision. I can see. You, do you know how many times you're on your phone or responding to an email when I talk? Am I now? No, because you're reading. Nope. Shut your mouth. 
Now, I understand how someone might not like this dynamic due to the age gap. So it makes me nervous to have him meet my family. And I am putting that off so much because I am too nervous about my family because they tend to be very judgmental and have many opinions. How do you think I should approach my family slash parents and potentially introduce him? Sorry if this was very long. It absolutely was not. Y'all are ridiculous when you think your emails are long. I will attach a pic of me and then send a pic of us together. Yay. I love you. Heart, heart, heart. Here is a heart, pic heart, of heart. Her. Cute. Adorable. I think we have the same shoes on. And here is a pic of them. Cute. Adorable. He looks like a man. Yes. Um. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, I agree. I think age gaps can be tricky. I, however, do think you're in the right type of age gap. Yeah. We talk about this on the podcast all the time. Did we talk? We either talked about it on this one or in the episode before, but men age mature emotionally so much later than women. Yeah. So ideally it would be nice to have them a little bit older because emotionally you're all, you guys are probably on the same page. Yeah. And I, in my opinion, because I have had a big age gap before, that's not that crazy. I don't think that's that crazy. I don't at think that's all. crazy at all. Um, I also feel like we've talked about this. Like there's there's gaps where it's weird. Like if you're like eighteen and he's like in his late twenties, like it's like uh, that's a little weird or yeah. like whatever. But that was we that was me. That's what my parents said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, they were right. <laughs> they were right. Um, but I don't think that age range is that crazy. No. Also, I don't know. I feel like with family, I don't know your family, so I don't know like what their vibe would be. But I feel like most people, they vibe off of like how you present something. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always tell, um, we've talked about this before in regards to like, like self-confidence like if I walk in a room and I'm like shrugged over I'm like holding my stomach I'm like walking weird like my jacket covering me like I'm I'm present like I'm even just being around me you're gonna read off of my body language that I'm like insecure and then if I open my mouth and I start saying stuff like oh yeah well like I'm like everything's like too tight, like oh my stomach, like whatever. Then like you're gonna you're gonna vibe off of that, right? Hundred percent. Whether, but if I walk in and I'm just like strutting my way through, my stomach could still be hanging out just the same as like it was before. But like guaranteed, not nobody's like gonna like be paying attention or notice it. They're gonna mm -hmm. like feed off of the way that I'm presenting myself. Just like if I go to Ash and I'm like, hey, so like there's this guy and like, he's great. He's, he's a lot older than me, like blah, blah, blah. Then she's already going to be going in with a like, Oh, this You're is concerned. weird. Yeah. So I'm going to be extra like observant about things. What, instead of me like describing this guy, telling her how like, Oh my gosh, I'm like so into this guy. Like he's everything. He treats me this way. He treats me that way. And then if she's like, Oh, how old is he? I'm like, Oh yeah, he's 29. And then if she were to bring up the age gap, then I could like correct and be like, honestly, like I don't think it's weird at all. And like, I, I feel like we're very much on the same page, but I feel like if you go into it being like, well, he's a lot older than me. Like, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I think, I think it's about how you present it. And as your family is going to be concerned about how does he treat you? What kind of person he is. So I would focus more on just highlighting why he is amazing for you. And if the age comes up and you just respond super confident, confidently about how old he is, then if they bring up concerns, you address it. I completely agree. That's Literally, we love you so much. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> completely agree. I think it is so easy to be judgmental on paper. Yeah. But I think he should be given a proper chance at showing his personality, at showing his character, at who he is at his core, at what he believes in and 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 what he prioritizes in his life, aka you. So, I think he should be given that option with your family, and I do agree with Taryn. I think sometimes it's better to let especially if you think this is going to be a problem. Sometimes it's better to let them lead with that. 
and then like find out the age later. Like it doesn't need to be first thing. Hey, this is this is Jake and he's significantly older than me. No, yeah, you yeah. know, like let him like shine, let him smile, let him shake your dad's hand, like let them sit down for dinner and like all chat about like sports and news and like what he's into and like let him tr- get a shot at like schmoozing your parents before you hit him with the age if that's a big problem for you and for yeah. them. Like I also feel like there's like one of my friends is like in a relationship and there's like an 11 age, 11 year age gap. Mm -hmm. That's that's significant. And I think that even that like she told us about it and we were like, what? Like, that's crazy. But then the second we're around them, it's like they're so clearly like meant for each other and their life and everything just vibes so well together. So. I've never, it's like, she'll mention something. She'll be like, oh, he's turning su- like such and such age. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I forget you how forget. much older he is. Yeah. So that just becomes like a minor detail. So I think it's like, like Ash said, I think you need to get in front of them. Like, and yeah. just let, also, I'm sorry, but like, if he's a man, he can handle it. He needs to yeah. go in and show who he is and be confident and shake your dad's hand, look him straight in the eye and like show him more of the characteristics that make a family sit back and be like, oh, I trust you with this person I love. Like, don't worry about all that other stuff, you know? Yeah, and I I bet it feels a little weird to you because you said you're not quite on your own yet and he is so on his own. Um, So I guarantee, I guarantee you, if you were to like move out tomorrow, it wouldn't be as big of a thing. Like you're entering into that age where, where age is just a number. Um, and it's probably just hitting a little different because you're still like, your parents are still helping you out. But you said you're, you're currently transitioning out of that, um, with your big girl job. Congratulations. Yeah. So I really don't think it's that big of a deal. If you guys are living your best life he makes you so happy and he obviously has great taste in like podcasts and stuff um Mm -hmm. then clearly your family is going to see the chemistry between the two of you and the age thing will just be a number it's not it's not that it's also just not that crazy it just feels crazy because you're still your parents are still helping you out i guarantee it like once that went away or once that goes away you're gonna be like oh yeah this is fine no it's not it's not crazy yeah and i i think taryn's right lead with confidence Show it's not a problem to you. Show it's not a problem to him. And like, let let him charm away. Yeah. You know? I love it. That's what meeting the parents is supposed to be about. I love it. But I, w- I also feel like if you, if you are concerned, like if you have one of those families that's very like dramatic and would say weird, weird things to him, there's nothing wrong with like, I would meet with your family and be like, hey, so... I'm dating someone and then like let them get it all out of like asking you a billion questions super hype him up let them if they if they ask his age you say it and they have a problem like hash that out with them and then and then at the end of it be like okay like but y'all need to like get on board because like I really like him and I want him to meet you guys because that's important to to him if you have issues you tell Mm -hmm. me later but I do think sometimes like if If your family's the crazy one, it's your job to kind of try to help pave that way so you're not, like, throwing the person to the wolves. Mm -hmm. So I think you you do the pre, talk to your family, tell them about him, let them get all their crazy out, and then when they meet him, they'll love him. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Thank you so much for writing in, Anonymous. I hope it goes well. If you feel feel like it, feel free to update us. Yeah, we would love it goes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, (gasps) Taryn. She almost knocked her coffee all over her laptop, all over her microphone. Keyword is almost. <laughs> Keyword Got is almost. reflexes like a ninja. Okay. Wrap um, us up with the dad joke, Taryn. I got Taryn. us. I got Wrap us. us up with the dad joke, Taryn. I got us. Wrap us up with the dad okay. joke, Taryn. Okay. Taryn. 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 Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> I once got fired from a canned juice company. Apparently, I couldn't concentrate. Ooh, but I... Ch- Guys. Nailed it. If you made it to the dad joke, you already know we love you the most. Just send us stories if you have them that you would like advice on yes, or please. tearing it up. Funny stories. Yes, that would please. be lovely. Um, also, be sure to check us out on our premium subscription service where you can get bonus content of Taryn and I mm-hmm. doing AMAs, doing solo episodes, doing scary stories. Yep. So check us out there. It's only $5. It's totally worth it. And we'll talk to you later. Love you guys so much. Goodbye. Bye.